Good evening. Thank you for joining the Board of Selectmen joint meeting with the Finance Appropriation and Advisory Committee meeting. Uh, I just want to state this meeting is being recorded. And without objection, the chair of the Board of Selectmen will facilitate item seven on the agenda with the understanding that the FAA chair will chair the FAA committee concurrently, including any allowable discussions, questions, business, or motions requested or required under item seven. Please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes, January 22nd, 2024. Mr. Marcy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes of January 22nd, 2024 as written. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next on the agenda, appointments. Capital Improvement <coughs> Planning Committee. Douglas Macedo, term to expire June 30th, 2027. Is Douglas here? Mr. Marcy? Yeah, he checked in with me, Mr. Chairman. He was, uh, he's still at work <clears throat> on that one, but uh, um, Doug wants to step up and, you know, help the town. He saw we had some open positions, and he thought the Capital Improvement Plan and Planning Committee would be a good place to help out. That's about it. Excellent. It's a pleasure of the board. And Mr. Chair, um, Gen Sullivan. Thank you. Generally, we ask, especially for new appointments, so I'd be willing to appoint Doug and uh, have Mr. Ruder or Michelle through our office just extend an invitation for him to come in at a future meeting to talk a little bit about himself. So, with that, I'll make a motion to appoint Douglas Macedo, with term to expire June 30th, 2027. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There are none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Next on the agenda, we have a resignation. Council on Aging, Cheryl Layden, effective January 22nd, 2024. Do we, need a, do we need a vote on that to accept it? Yes. Uh, generally, we read the, the letter. I don't have it up in front of me right now. But we can just bypass that if you want, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I... I oh. Do I accept it? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, so. Sometimes there's a reason, maybe the person moved or we just did it generic. Uh, as of January 22nd, 2024, I'm giving notice of my resignation as a volunteer member of Council of Aging, honored to serve the senior residents of Dublin. Mr. Chair, make a motion to accept with regret the rec resignation effective immediately of Cheryl Layden of the town administrator's office and or the director for the letter on our behalf, thanking her for volunteering her efforts. Second. Motion and a second. Thank you for pulling that up, Mr. Sullivan. It wasn't coming up for me here. Any any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chair, quick question. Yes. How many openings will that leave, Michelle, do we know on that board? Um, two. Can we get that out on our social media links that the Council of Aging would gladly accept two volunteers on their board, and any volunteers, obviously, but two volunteers officially on their board. I think to add on to that, we should put all of the vacancies. Yeah, we've done that in the past. Yeah, they're, they're, they're up there. They're up there. there. Yeah. Yep, okay. there's a link. Okay, well now we have two, so on that one specifically, we can let people know. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And uh, unless the board has an objection, I'd like to move up the student rep to here. Before citizen comments, any objection? Go right ahead, student rep. <clears throat> so I'll start my report off with some very exciting news. Um, last week I got into my dream school, Northeastern University. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, at Shepherd Hill this Friday, we have a neon night being hosted by the athletic department. I will be attending as well as many of my classmates, so I'm very excited for that as well. Um, speaking of the athletic department last Tuesday, um, the boys um, varsity basketball team won their senior night against Oakmont, um, which was a very exciting moment for the program. Um, we had midterms around three weeks ago, but luckily I didn't have to take too many, but the ones I did, I did pretty well on, so that's also exciting. Um, 
one of my classmates, Harry Kennan, actually uh, threw his own play on the weekend of January 5th and 6th, which was very successful. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the play, um, so I thought that was great that someone so young was doing something so incredible. Um, and speaking of entertainment, um, Show Choir hosted their home competition this past weekend, and I'm under the impression that it was also very successful. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. So, why, thank you. Well, Mr. Chair, um, as always, Vanessa does a great job. I want to congratulate her on getting in the school that she chose and we've had many student reps and they've all as far as I know most at least have gone on to be successful. I have no doubt she will also but congratulations for all your hard work. Thank I'm sure you. your family's very proud of you. Yes. You can go back someday and have one of these seats if you like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congrats Thank you so much. Yes. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is citizen comments. Does any citizen here tonight have anything they would like to comment on that is not on this evening's agenda? Mary Sansusi, I live on Ramshorn Road. <clears throat> um, a couple weeks ago at your last meeting, you made reference well, we had a big presentation with Ty and Bond regarding the intersection of uh, Dudley Hill Road, Airport, and so on, Tanyard Road. And several of you made the comment that that was a small part of a very big picture. What's the big picture? Mr. Ruta, would you like to address that, or would you like me to? From, from what I understand, there is, and Mr. Ruta can fill in the blanks because I'm sure I'll miss, I'll miss some <clears throat> pertinent facts. But we're working on grants. Uh, it's something to do with schools, where if something's near a school, you can get a grant for sidewalks, road improvements. <clears throat> the plan is starting at Shepherd Hill, down up to that intersection at uh, Ramsorn Road, and then down to the intersection with Santa, Center Road and then down uh, Dudley Hill Road, and then down Airport Road to the lights to basically have the roads widened. Uh, I, I don't know the exact what's going to happen yet because we haven't gotten, we haven't gotten grants to get the studies done yet. Like for instance, the intersection <coughs> of Ramshorn Road, make that a little wider sidewalk so people can actually walk through it, have it a better, be a better intersection. We're not looking to spend any of the town's money. We're looking to do this through grants, just improve the town, make it better. Is Ty and Bond going to come back with another plan regarding uh, Tan Yard Road? I believe that was referred back to the planning board. No, it, uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the input we had at that public hearing, mm -hmm. we've eliminated Tan Yard from, from the plan, and we're just going to focus on the intersection of the airport, Dudley Hill. Okay. So no, no dead end. <laughs> and Tan Yard. Well, okay. ten yards removed from the plan. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, sure. Mr. Chair, just to continue. Mr. Sullivan. It, and Jeff talked about it when he was still here, and Jonathan. It, it's similar to what we did. We mentioned it the last meeting. It's similar to what happened on Mason Road, because it was in so many feet school that was all grant-funded sidewalks, and there was some pushback at first. People were worried. Now you go by, and it looks like it's been there for. 20 years. So it's a similar grant program, which Mr. Ruder has been pursuing with the highway, with the town planner and others. So that's the plan. And, and, and you stated we, last meeting, we told Ty and Bond that wasn't the scope of the original plan, and they're going back to the original sidewalk infrastructure, maybe some road work there. So yes. Tanyard is, as we said that night, it was a conceptual plan only. It's yes. completely off that. That plan is completely off the table for any future discussion. And, and if I can add one more thing, Mary, any step along the way, we're going to have information sessions like we did that night. So if you see that on an agenda, come down uh, like we did that night. We're open to discussion, open to hearing people who live there, well, live anywhere, but especially people who live there where it would impact. See what they think. Thank you. Very welcome. Thanks, Mary. Anyone else that would like to speak on something not on this evening's agenda? <clears throat> okay, next on the agenda we have public hearings. National Grid Poll Hearing Plan Number 308-605-64, Sawmill Road. Going to open that public hearing at 
6.43 p.m. Is there anyone here from National Grid? If you could come up to the... Hello? Yes, if you could tell us who you are. I am, my name is Kara Foster. I am one of the designers at National Grid. Uh, current plans uh, in place that as I see them, there's a is the relocation of one pole and the placement of two others. The existing pole is pole 25 on Sawmill Road. That pole is being placed uh, roughly 25 feet away. It is, there's a new development on the new Sophie's Way. Uh, that pole is currently located in the middle of that road that is being added, uh, added on, so that pole is getting moved out of the way of the road. And then those two additional poles that are being placed are so that way we can continue to supply power to the new development as long as, as well as both Sawmill Road and Lawrence Road, uh, which it is uh, connecting to. Excellent. Any board members have any comments? Mr. Sullivan. Um, yeah, and I, I think the applicants here, and I don't know if you want to recognize, is Sophie's Way intended to remain private? Uh, my I believe it is uh, maintained private. When I, w I was not the one who designed this personally. When I was reviewing all of the documents that I received, I only received uh, petitions for r up, to, uh, up to the end of the uh, right of way on the on the, on Saw Mill Road. And then it just ends and it, uh, it continues up on a easement uh, piece of paper, which I presume is on for the new development on Sophia's Way. Okay, and once it, once it turns into Sophie, is that going to become underground utilities? Or is it yes, to uh, the, uh, on, off pole 25, we're installing uh, what we call a riser, which is how you make the transition from above ground to underground. Okay. That's all, I just was curious, thank yep. you. Any other thank you, board Mr. members have any? Anyone else like to speak on this matter? <clears throat> Seeing no one. Uh, Mr. Chair. I've got to close. Oh, I understand. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. No problem. I've, yeah, I've got to open and close each of the three, I believe. Correct. Yes. I'm going to close the public hearing at 6.46 p.m. I No worries. We are we're fine. I'm just going to make a motion to grant the um, applicant's request. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next up, we have a National Grid Poll Hearing, Plan Number 308-60564 on Sawmill Road. We're going to open that hearing at 6.47 p.m. Are you here so for that I, as well? I believe, I believe uh, this is, uh, I covered all three polls. I wasn't aware that it was broken multiple ones. No problem. It oh, looks yeah. like this was amended. Yeah. yeah. So I plan amended. Do we need an additional vote on this? Yep, it's a separate, separate, it was a separate, separate? Poll hearing. Okay. Yeah, I see that. I just have to zoom to see the two. Okay. Would you like to? Uh, oh, you you already went over on the previous. Yeah. Which, which poll specifically is this? Is this one of the two on Sawmill, or this is this the one that's on? Lawrence this Road? is. National Grid to install two J.O. poles on Sawmill Road and relocated one J.O. pole on Sawmill Road beginning at a point approximately 50 feet northeast of the center line of the intersection of Sophie's Way and Sawmill Road and continuing approximately 100 feet in a southeast direction. Install two new pole P11 at northeast corner of Sawmill Road and Lawrence Road and P number 25 to 50 on Sawmill Road relocate one existing pole p number 25 approximately 30 feet and a northeast director to make way for sophie's way yeah those are the same ones i uh, just stressed i can go into more detail if you wish but those are the ones i've already addressed okay anyone have any add on this anyone here that would like to speak on this okay seeing none we'll close the public <coughs> hearing at six 48 p.m. Mr. Marcy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the, the, this request. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good luck to the applicant. Yeah. Yes. Um, next on the agenda, we have a change of officers, director, Polish National Alliance of Dudley, DBA, PNA, located at 214 West Main Street, Dudley, Mass. New officers, <coughs> Kurt. I, I don't want to say the last name. I'm Polish, and I don't want to say it. That's the chief. Yeah. ZMY SLOWSKI of 12 Francis Drive, Dudley, Mass. Wayne Rosinus of 62 Baker Pond Road, Dudley, Mass. Michael Harney of 10 Dudley Hill Road, Dudley, Mass. I'm going to open this hearing at 6.49 p.m. Are the applicants here? You want to come to the podium there? Could you just let us know who you are? Good evening. Nice to see you all. Nice to meet you. My name is Kurt Simzlowski. I think I, I think I got it right. Um, I live at uh, Francis Drive. I was elected in November to the Board of Directors. Look forward to making improvements in the club and uh, helping out the community where we can. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'm Wayne Rosinas, and pretty much the same thing, out to make improvements wherever we can. Thank you. I'm Michael Hardy. Same thing, 10 Dudley Hill Road. But also in the spring until the end of the fall, I also have the hot dog court outside in the parking lot. Oh, you're the guy. I was yeah. going to say, <laughs> I recognize you now. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we are changing officers, correct? So, Mr. Chair. Just Mr. Sullivan. Uh, everything's all set with the paperwork. Right, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other any other comments from the board? Nope. Any comments from anyone here? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing at six fifty two PM. What is the board's pleasure? Mr. Chair, grant the P and A's request for uh, new officers with the three previous mentioned gentlemen. Second. In a second, any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, public business. Um, police Department, board to vote on conditional offer of employment. Mr. Dylan Rainey. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Good evening. As, uh, as the board uh, members, um, about a month ago, Officer Paige Morris resigned. She went on to, uh, to Millbury Police, they left us with an opening. Um, we conducted uh, a search. Um, one of the applicants, um, Dylan Rini, uh, applied, met all the uh, requirements. We held uh, an interview, uh, four sergeants, a lieutenant, and myself. And uh, he got recommendation six out of six from all of us to uh, offer him a conditional offer of employment. I submitted a letter to the town administrator um, recommending my conditional offer of employment upon successful completion of the required uh, requirements that I put forth. Um, I don't see a problem with Mr. Dillon completing that, uh, Dylan Reaney completing that. And I'm hoping that uh, I get the uh, recommendation from the uh, from the Board of Selectmen to proceed with the uh, conditional offer of employment for Mr. Rini. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Anything from the Board? Uh, just our usual, Chief, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dylan, uh, tell us a little bit about himself, a little bit about his background. Had a chance to meet him individually. Be nice for the people to probably hear a little bit. All right, my name is uh, Dylan Rainey. I'm, I'm from Millbury, <clears throat> Massachusetts. I'm a graduate of Anna Maria College. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I'm coming from Dean College as a police officer there, and before there, I was with Bolton PD for four years. He also holds a bachelor's degree in uh, criminal justice from Anna Maria, and graduated the uh, Boylston Police Academy. Um, he was actually a classmate of uh, Officer Moore's. So, um, we, we lost one, and hopefully we gain one back from that academy class. 
You know, Chief, that's good too because you generally we get a reserve that we have to put through, but we're going to get a fully trained, fully accredited right. mm -hmm. post, whatever you want to call it, candidate. Right. Thank you, Chief. Anyone else? <coughs> What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Marcy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve uh, the conditional offer of employment to Mr. Dylan Reaney. Mr. Chair, second, what, one question for the administrator and the chief. We don't have to spell out what the conditions are, right? The applicant understands. Uh, I, I can go over it real quick. It's very simple. It's just to uh, verify his MPTC full-time academy, which I've already done, verification of his mass post certification, verification of his LTC and driver's license, uh, medical exam, psych screening, background check, and firearms qualification. And like I said, I don't foresee any issues with any of those. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Congratulations and welcome. Seeing Marcy in my mailbox every day. <laughs> Good luck, Dylan. Uh, <laughs> okay, next on the agenda, police department. <laughs> Sergeant Chandler Boyd and Sergeant Keith Remillard, per recommendation of police chief and lieutenant, removed from probationary period effective Janu uh, February 9th, 2024. Chief? Uh, approximately about a year ago, on February 10th, uh, 2023. The, um, the board uh, promoted um, Officer Keith Remillard and Officer Chandler Boyd to rank of sergeant. Uh, it was on upon one year probation. Uh, they have uh, done a great job in their uh, transition to the supervisory roles. Uh, they've been um, professional, um, and I, th I believe um, they were a good pick for our department. Uh, Lieutenant East conducted an assessment on both of them, and he recommended that they be removed from their probation. There has been no issues with either one of them. And based on their performance, their recommendation from Lieutenant Nice and myself, I'm asking the board to remove them from their one year probation period. Thank you, Chief. Any, any, uh, anything from the board on this? Mr. Johnson. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, as the recommendation of the police chief and lieutenant to remove from the probation period effective February 9, 2024, Sergeant Chandler Boyd and Sergeant Keith Armand. Second. second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank Good you, luck. Sergeant. Yep. Good luck to the gentleman. Yep. Next on the agenda, Nichols College, one day outdoor entertainment license, Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for a fire and ice event located in the Chamois, Chamois parking lot. Hello. Hello. Heather Bowes, 18 Mill Street here for Nichols College. Um, we're having a fire and ice event Wednesday night in the parking lot. Um, we'll have the ADC, the food vendor, we'll have food out there. Um, fire, dancers, entertainment, boombox um, from 4 to 7.30, and we're just looking for a permit for that. Chief? Just real, real quick, I spoke with the uh, public safety director. Uh, he advised me of the, uh, the details of it. Uh, he's hiring a police detail, and I believe also a fire detail for the event. Last year, they held it, and there was no issues last year. So okay. I recommend that that be approved. Thank you, Chief. Do you have anything, Fire Chief? Anything um, we add? just we got the fire detail all set. We got the person in place and everything, so it's good to go. You're good with this? Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion from the board? Nope. Nothing? What's the board's pleasure? Oh, Mr. Clark, I, apo I apologize. I didn't see you. Go well, ahead. That's all right. Most people don't. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, I'd ask uh, Richard Clark, Airport Road, Dudley. Yes. Uh, do we have our 
pilot agreement in place with the college at this point? I that is being worked on, and well, not currently. Then. Not currently, no. Uh, well, I would submit that residents in the town have to pay fees, if you will, for just about everything, from dogs to trash. Uh, I think that maybe somewhere along the way, a donation on the part of Nichols, perhaps, to one of the efforts, municipal efforts, such as a playground for something like this, might be in order. I know there's no fee structure in place, but uh, as a gesture of goodwill and as part of the community, so to speak, it might not be a bad idea. I understand. Thank you, Mr. Clark. There is a you did pay a $35 right? permit $35. fee. Just oh, you did? Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, 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 I, and they have right away, Mr. Mr. Marcy. I just wanted to say we do have an, a meeting with Nichols coming up in a couple of weeks <clears throat> where I intend on bringing that up. And Mr. Chair, too, as long as I've been on the board, when Nichols has an event, whatever the appropriate fee is, they've always paid it. I've, yeah. We've never waived a fee for any event that Nichols has to pay for. True. Any anything else? Anyone else? I apologize. I didn't. I didn't look up. No, we're all good. Okay. Um, the permit. Just one thing on the application. It did say four to seven thirty. Mm -hmm. Here it says four thirty to seven. If we could. Four to seven thirty. Yep. <coughs> Is that a square mirror on our behalf? Mm -hmm. Probably. <laughs> okay. So four to seven thirty, and whoever makes the motion, please put that in the motion. Mr. Marcy. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the one day outdoor entertainment license for Nichols College, Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. for a fire and ice event located in the Shamey parking lot. 7.30. Uh, <clears throat> 4.30 to 7.30, Heather, did I get it right? 4, Four to 7.30. 4 to 7.30. <laughs> 4 to 7.30. Thank 30. you. Thank you. I went, the other, I went the other way. You're, you're all set That's now. my motion. I'll say. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Four to seven thirty. Four to yeah. Four to seven thirty. We have yes. a chat or a graph for that, please. <coughs> second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Mr. Bose. Uh, next on the agenda, Board of Selectmen vote to adopt flag protocol policy. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I've had this out for the board to take a look at for a couple of weeks now. Um, this has been reviewed by legal counsel. What it does is solidify um, the following. The only flags that are allowed to be flown on the town property are the flag of the United States, the flag of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the flag of the town of Dudley, the POW MIA flag, and any town departmental specific flag. <coughs> And then it shows, and then it goes on to say, flags shall be displayed in conformance like they currently are. And the problem this solves is multiple requests to display different flags of different political agendas. Um, by limiting this to the flags mentioned here, we've eliminated the need to get into that one one political ideology or another. We represent all political, all constituents. So this is a, a trend that's been happening in many different cities and towns across the Commonwealth. I think it makes sense. Town Council agrees that it makes sense. And it certainly solves issues, current and may, potential issues that may arise in the future. Thank you, Mr. Ruta. Any, any discussion from the board? Board's pleasure. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt the flag protocol policy. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Mr. Chair, a quick question. Yes, Mr. To the administrator, do we have a policy, or should we have a policy if we do not, regarding town vehicles? I remember one time there was a couple stickers that people had put on, and I know they were removed. Do you have a policy for that, or should we? I think you and I, Mr. Sullivan, suggested that policy 15 years ago. I, th I, I think it actually passed, I, actually 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to look it up to make sure, but I think we do have a, a policy that <coughs> any, no town vehicle shall, shall display anything but okay. I know we've been brought up business one time. related. Mm -hmm. I know we brought it up one time. Yeah. Right. Thank you. 
Michelle will check. Next on the agenda, joint public Thank meeting you. with FAA. Uh, FAA calls FAA committee to order. We're going to open the hearing at Sizzle. Would, would this no need for a public opening? It's just a public no, it's meeting. No, this is going to be a workshop. Okay. Open for just wanted to just wanted to double check. FAA chair. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's uh, February 5th at 7.05. The FAA will be called to order. Thank you. So the fiscal year 25 budget request, Fire, Police, Highway, Town Clerk, Treasurer, Collect, Council on Aging and Planning, Board of Selectmen and FAA discuss requests with each other. Department heads and chair facilitates discussion between each department head and residents at his discretion relative to fiscal year 25 departmental requests. Board of Selectmen FAA may take vote any action relative thereto. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is update on tentative dates for public meetings to act on the fiscal year 25 budget. So these are dates where we're going to meet after this to either discuss or vote on these uh, items. Second joint meeting with the FAA to discuss municipal budget department head recommendations will be Thursday, February 8th at 6 30 p.m. Then there's a joint meeting with the Charlton Board of Selectmen and the school committee to discuss the fiscal year 25 district district assessment. That is Wednesday, February 14th at 7 p.m. at Shepherd Hill High School. That will be both live streamed and open to the public. Next we've got a third joint meeting with the FAA to discuss municipal budget. Those are the town administrator recommendations. That will be Monday, February 26th at 6.30 p.m. Next, there is a meeting of the capital. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Um, that third joint meeting, um, I don't know if there's any objection to this. Um, is it possible we can move that to the Thursday, which would be? February 29th. February 29th. I usually use the date February 29th when I don't want to have a meeting. Next year. This year. Oh, next year. <laughs> this year. Yes, we can definitely do that. February 29th. Any objection? Yeah, I'm fine. Any, any input from anyone? I thought it was there? the 29th. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. They all sound equal in my mind. Yes. So that will be Thursday, February 29th at 6.30 p.m. Then there is a meeting of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee Monday, March 11th at 6 p.m. Then there is another meeting of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee on Monday, March 25th at 6.30 p.m. to hear departmental requests, followed by the FAA meeting to vote the fiscal year 25 proposed budget and articles at 7 p.m. Lastly, there's the Board of Selectmen to vote on fiscal year 25 proposed budget and articles for inclusion on May 20th, 2024 annual town meeting. April 1st, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. is the regularly scheduled meeting. Okay. What do we do from here? The, the next thing listed, Mr. Root, is FAA chair concludes business adjourns meeting of FAA. Well, we got to do the in-between stuff. So... I thought we could uh, call up, um, maybe start with the town clerk and, and uh, my department, listen to the departmental requests. What we generally do, Mr. Chairman, and what we've done in the past, what our predecessors have done, is that we, have, we do bottom-up budgeting all the time, but these meetings don't necessarily take place at this level publicly. Mm -hmm. Tonight I thought it might be a good idea in going forward that we hear the departmental <coughs> requests, get everybody in the same room, they'll have the opportunity to ask the department heads will make or making that but those budget requests to the residents what you know if there are any questions now is the time to ask okay you won't hear from me mr. chairman until all the departmental requests have been submitted the public's had a chance to comment the board's had a chance to comment the FAA has had a chance to comment okay. and then from there we'll put together my recommendations excellent it's all right with everyone I'll just do it as it's on this list just so I don't skip over everyone uh, first one on the list is fire Fire Chief. Good evening. So I know you all have copies of this. So um, 
just going through it real quick the top lines all the salary lines all those are increases due to contractual increases or step increases um, so those could not be avoided if you move down to the um, from the call firefighters salary all the way to the end gas diesel uh, there were no increases I level funded every single line from last year and in fact two lines I reduced um, ambulance billing service I reduced by five thousand dollars which was a fourteen point three percent decrease and gas diesel I reduced by two thousand dollars which was a six point seven percent decrease um, we were asked by the town administrator to stay at two and a half percent for an overall increase for our bottom line and the fire department came in under that at 2.46 percent and um, furthermore the uh, fire department will have no capital requests this year at all thank you chief anyone have any questions from either board Thanks. Mr. Thank you for the request that we did in the final Yep. 2.46 overall. Thank you, Dean. Mr. Mayor, anything? You're good. Anybody from FAA got a question? Any, no, anyone? That's pretty straightforward. Anyone? Mm. Nothing. <clears throat> Next department we have is the police department. Chief? Same as the uh, fire department, uh, most of the uh, wage increases are part of contracts, uh, step increases. Um, one area that I did increase at the budget is the vacation buyback. We always come up short. Um, as uh, officers get more years of experience, they also move up on the vacation time. Sometimes they, uh, they don't take the vacation. They're able to buy back two weeks worth per contract. So I asked for that to be increased because uh, it it's, that's the number that we always get in, the, in, the, in red. Uh, holiday salaries also uh, another contract issue where uh, officers get super holiday. They tend to work the super holidays, so they get more money on the holidays. Uh, that has increased over the years. That's always been in the red also. Uh, Quinnbill, which is also the edu education incentive per contract, when the wages go up, um, that goes up. Uh, one of the sergeants is uh, finishing up obtaining his degree, so we encourage that, but yet it costs money. And last but not least, the uh, photos and prints. Uh, we sent one more officer to get certified. Uh, that does increase by $1,200, but it also decreases the possibility of overtime because of the officer's working. Now he doesn't get called out, he doesn't get overtime because he's already on shift. Um, if you notice, there's a, there's a blank uh, line item for animal control, animal control salary. Uh, as of this year, uh, that uh, responsibility it now falls on the police department. Um, so I believe that's going to get funded, level funded at some point. And also you have a social worker detective position that uh, it's not funded, but I would ask the, uh, the resident support for that position. Uh, in the last three months, we've had two armed robberies. We've had a missing person juvenile that we... Uh, uh, we had two search warrants on Oxford Ave that yielded uh, a good amount of fentanyl, crack cocaine. What we do right now is we take our patrol officers and we either put them on overtime to work on these cases or you're completely taking them off the road so now you're losing the services throughout the town. Um, I think a detective position, we're one of the only departments in the area that does not have a detective position. It's much needed, but again, it's a funding issue. Um, and that's the only one thing that I would be asking for uh, down the road with the, uh, if we could get some money towards that. But other than that, uh, that's the only increases that I, I have in the budget right now. Hey, Chief, Any, anything? Anybody else? Yeah. Any questions? Any, anyone from the board? Any uh, questions Chief, how, okay. Chief, how much, what kind of request would you be if you were to put that position in? Uh, ideally, what we would do is we would hire uh, another patrolman, uh, just like we just hired uh, Mr. Dylan Reaney. So you would basically start off uh, patrolman as step one. 
Uh, right now, our step one is $53,000. Um, that could be offset by some overtime. So even though it's costing 53, you could be saving a little bit in overtime costs uh, where you know, in reality, it's only costing the town 45,000. But then again, it all depends on um, how much work. And lately, it seems like, uh, you know, I think I jinxed it because I'm kind of busy lately with stuff like that. Good. Mr. Sullivan. So, T, previously, wasn't the detective, uh, essentially at the time, was an internal promotion more of a title than a new position, right? Would anybody just had retitled? Correct. The, uh, there's no extra pay towards that position. Um, I believe we uh, we just have the. It's an internal promotion. Uh, basically, taking the the high. Usually, one of the, the patrolmen, and you're taking them off the road, putting them on the um, on the uh, to work cold cases. Uh, they would also follow up with uh, domestic violence. They would follow up with overdoses, uh, like most other towns do. Um, right now, like I said, most of the time, if a case comes in. You have the officers that work the road either come in on overtime or they, they get taken off the road completely. Um, this, this past incident, I would say we probably spent about 40 hours of overtime on top of pulling people off the road on day shift and second shift to try to reach out to state, federal, um, and different agencies to try to get videotapes and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's needed. But then you're also pulling that officer off the road, and it's frustrating when you have two people working, and they're working on this missing person case, and uh, a car accident comes in, and now they have to get off the phone, go to the car accident, come back, and then we start where they just took off with uh, with the feds. So it's uh, it, it's a it's a much needed position, but it's uh, it, we're one of the last departments that don't don't have a detective in the area. Mr. Mayotte, anything else? Anything else from anyone here? No, I'm good for now, Nothing. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Chief. Thank Chief. Chief. Next up, we have highway. I'm going to do highway with an assist from the form and use. If needed. If needed. So he's on standby, Mr. Well, we'll call you off the bench if we need you. The outgoing highway superintendent. Um, Mr. Chairman, develop uh, this request for FY25. I've had a chance to review it. The bottom line is at 2.49%. Um, what, what it proposes to do within that 2.49% is to replace the foreman salary. We now have a foreman, but we didn't fund it in this fiscal year. So we've elevated a high, heavy equipment operator, assistant mechanic, to the position of foreman is being paid through that line item, but obviously the intent of the Highway Commission has always been to replace that position. So within that 2.49%, we're replacing that position. And the only other discussion that I have with is with the Highway Superintendent is that we may consider um, elevating one of the Highway Truck Driver positions within that 2.49% on my recommendation to a heavy equipment operator because we have people who are certified to do the job. It's a small difference in money. It's within a dollar an hour and we get a lot more skill and a lot more um, use out of that position uh, as a heavy equipment operator versus a truck driver labor. So we have somebody on staff who's already fully certified to do that. We're also up for union negotiations this year. Um, so there's a placeholder in those line items uh, with the outgoing highway superintendent's request with an uh, increase within 2.5% as a placeholder because June 1st, the new contract will start and hopefully have been negotiated and decided upon. Mr. Rita. Mr. Chair. Mr. Sullivan. Am I, Mr. The administrator, am I missing the snow removal line item? Is that somewhere else? Uh, it's, it's 95, it's Sorry. line 158. Oh, I see. Now, okay. It's below. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we left it there, Mr. Chairman, a few years at that same level. Yeah. We've left it at that same level. Again, we, 
not, uh, the, the override question for the highway did not pass. Right. So we, we're, we're keeping it uh, keeping it tight. Got to 2.49%. That figure was 80 for the longest time. I think only went to 95 in the last couple of years. I think. About three or four years yeah. when Jeff came in, I think. Yeah. Okay. We we always overspent it. We probably will again this year, but we've elevated so that it it's much. a more reasonable yeah. number. A lot of things, and just to, in case anybody didn't catch that, that's the only line item we can actually on overspend is the snow snow removal line. Item. <clears throat> the dam inspections in MS4, there's a note here, they've been, they were relocated to the municipal expenses, which we'll go over at the next meeting, or maybe the, it's either the next meeting or the following meeting. But those line items still exist, but they'll be, they'll be heard at another meeting. Um, the other thing to consider, and I meant to bring it up when the police chief was up here, was the animal control line items. That now appear in the in the police budget. My recommendation will not include any more in those line items. We'll be simply moving this year's funding amount from the selectmen's budget into the police budget. So it will look like the police budget went up because those lines were moved, but the bottom line town municipal side is, has not moved. It's the same amount as it was this year. Yeah, one thing I like about this is that we stayed under two and a half, but yet we were able to increase the tree removal expense. I know that with that we come up against that pretty hard every year. Good. It's going to be part of that tree removal expense, Mr. Chairman, is going to be used to satisfy um, some brush removal and tree removal in and around the uh, the. Um, I'm having a brain, brain freeze. Where is it? The, the walking path. Rail, the rail trail. The rail trail. See, that's why I had him stand standby. The rail trail. <laughs> that's a matching fund. We've got a grant to do a lot of work on there. And, and we get that back. And we get it. You're right. Yeah. So. Excellent. Good. Fantastic. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor? You just answered my tree question, so yeah, that's fine. That was it. <laughs> was it rail trail related? Anyone else have? I just wanted to know what you're doing with it. Any? Any? I have a question. Any, Sorry. Question? Through, no. <laughs> through the chair. Um, I, I'm just taking a look. Maybe I misunderstood. Um, but I thought you had said that you were, um, because contract negotiations are forthcoming, that you were increasing um, the salary within that 2.5%, like just as a placeholder. But it looks like everything's less. So I'm. Because, you know, and, and that's a. That's a good catch because we hired a lot of new people who have started at the okay. step ones. Perfect. So I, they, I didn't know if there was turnover. Just figured into the, state, the actual step one. It is turnover. Okay, perfect. You know, Mr. Chair, also, can I ask the administrator? Mm -hmm. As we discussed at our last meeting, the, the amount of people we have lost from different departments, and some have been filled. We filled the police tonight. Can we just update the people on where we stand with our highway people? Because that took a big, we took a big hit on a lot of people. Yeah, we did. Obviously, superintendent. We 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 potentially, well, we're within a, within two people right now of getting back to the power level that we were two years ago. Just to be within even. two people. Yeah, just to be even. Mm. All right. But we're working on it, and I think some of these moves are actually going to be more efficient, particularly if we upgrade the heavy equipment operator, the truck driving heavy equipment. We'll be able to put somebody to work and use. Get some experience and potential out of that that position that we didn't have before. To Mr. Chair, again, one quick. That that's also including the fact we used to have two and a half people doing building and rounds. Now we have one basically doing the building with assist from highway guys. That's right. So those, those positions are never coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, with the current funding. That's so, yeah. Very well, never. Anything else? Nope. Mr. Mayor, anything else? Nope. Anyone here have anything you'd like to ask? No? Okay. Mr. Chairman, would you like me to do a recycling center? Uh, if you could. Looks Level like funded. it hasn't changed. Level funded. Level funded. Okay. So I that, and that having been said, we anticipate, and we're, we've been a year out of our contract, and we anticipate speaking to Pratt somewhere sometime within the next six months. 
I don't know what that's going to bring us, but we will have a funding for this. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Ritter. Uh, next up, we have Town Clerk. Town Clerk, yeah. Okay, do you want me just to give a brief overview and then if there's any questions? Sure. Okay. So I want to preface this like I do every year. Um, town clerk budget varies from year to year depending on the election cycles. Um, so you'll see we're asking for a substantial increase this year over last year. Um, for example, fiscal year 23, our total budget was 178,574. 178, that included three elections, so it was the state primary, state election, and the annual town election. However, two additional elections were scheduled. Um, the 9-8-22 was reimbursed by the school, and then we had the 425, which was unfunded. Um, I was able to fund that through some of the extra polling hours that we had, so I kind of keep that in case we have situations like this. It doesn't always cover it, but it helps make up a shortfall. Um, fiscal year 24, the budget was 176465 It included two elections, the annual town election and the presidential primary. However, three additional elections were added, so we have the special local election um, on August 17, 2023, the special state primary, which is tomorrow, and the special state election, which is on March 5th. Um, 817 was funded. We were able to get some money from the, the town accounts for that. For the special state primary and the special state election, we will get reimbursed for part of that, but not all of that. Um, so there'll be a little bit we can get reimbursed. Um, the extra I'm going to be taking from the extra polling hours again for that. Um, my proposed fiscal year 25 budget is 196134 it includes three elections, so the September 3rd state primary, the November 5th presidential, and the June 2025 annual town election. So that's why it varies from year to year. So I'll go through the line items, and if you have questions on any of them, just let me know. Um, salaries, I, put, I was told to put the assistant town clerk level funded because it's going to go from the merit pool increase. On mine, I am going to be putting an article in in the October meeting. As you can see, it's higher than the 2.5%. Um, last year, all of the town hall employee employees were brought up to the salary survey. I didn't realize they were doing that, so I didn't do that last year. That's why I'm doing it this year, to bring it up to where it should be in there. Um, sick time buyback is based on her pay rate. $1,000 is the certification for my um, town clerk certification. Expenses, I increased that. We cut it way down last year to 645. Um, I'm already 580 over it, so I put it up to 1500. Election expenses, again, that varies with the amount of elections that we have. Um, chapter 440, that is doing the census forms that we have that we're required to send out. I was short this year 530, so I had to take it from different accounts that I had. Um, we are looking at new companies next year for printing the street listing book, which we get from the census forms, um, and also the postal increases have gone up too, so that accounts for the increase in that. The bylaw codification, um, I level funded that. Out of that, 1195 is the annual maintenance fee, and then I estimated $3,500 for supplementals, and that depends on how many bylaw changes we bring up at the town meetings. Um, I still have one, there, there is money in there this year only because I'm waiting on one of the articles, the, the boating ones to get approved by the state, and then I'll have them update that. So while it looks like there's still money left from this year, there really isn't. It's only that I've held off on that supplement. Um, dog tag licenses, I kept that level funded. Again, I'm looking to cut costs, so I'm looking for a new company to provide the dog, the dog tags. Um, this includes 500, which is the annual software program fee that has not gone up for next year. Turning point, that's our clickers at the town meetings. So, Lori, on that, yep. you, on that line item. Which one? The one you're, we're talking about right now. Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry if I cut you off. No, that's okay. 
was based. That's okay. So what they did is this year we're short by $135. I did not factor in a 15% increase. I thought it would probably be like a five or six percent increase. So we were short that amount from this year, and I called them to find out for next year. And she sent me an email saying it shouldn't be more than 20%. And I said, I hope it wouldn't be more than 20%. I said, 15 is outrageous. Um, Spoken like a true salesman. <laughs> yeah, it more shouldn't be 20. more than that. Yeah. Um, so I estimated at 15 for next year as well. I know people are probably thinking we should just look for another clicker company, but it's not as easy as that. They're not compatible. We already purchased all these clickers, so you have to stay with Turning Point or you've got to get all new clickers. So in the end, I don't think you're going to make out any better. Um, but yeah, that was a shocker at how much they were going up on that. It's not a big number, it's just a big percent. It's a big percent, right. Um, luckily, we don't have many clickers. We are fortunate Webster has the same clickers and we reciprocate, we both share each other's um, clickers when we need to, so that helps quite a bit. Um, the voting equipment, it's 50, it went up $50 per tab, tabulator, and this year we have to get new batteries for them all, so that's an extra 875 for that. The life of the batteries are like five years, so it just hit at a bad time. So we've got that. And I think the last one is the poll pads. So the poll pads are what I use to check people in at the town meetings and the town elections. We have four of those. There is an annual maintenance fee of $300 per poll pad. I currently have four, but I'm looking to purchase a spare for that, like I do on the voting machines. I have a spare. If anything happened on election day, I'd be out of luck on that. We'd have to go to paper and then manually enter everything in for that precinct that went down. Um, so I only put in for the $300 annual fee that it would be for the cost of the poll pad. I could take that out of the extra polling hours that I have. So that's why I only put 300 in there. <clears throat> so I think that was everything, unless you had any questions for any of the, the line items. Mr. Mayor? Um, I guess the only question I have for um, the town administrator is um, the salary portion of this. Did we include that in the budget? When we motioned the budget, we included that increase? Or are we going to go back to a separate article for that? For the 24? Yeah, for the town clerk salary increase. I believe that's the, the number there, the 77 is the current number that was. Right, but I mean, going forward, are we going to, we're going to go with a separate article again? Or is that going to be that, worked into the budget? That can be done one of, the, one of two ways, article or the budget, as long as the town meeting approves and sets the elected official salary. So it's entirely up to. How were we funding it prior to that? Was that a free cash transfer? Generally, to those we would, two, we would generally do it in October and fund it with free cash. Free cash, or if we realize the surplus in one, in one by the end of the first quarter, we would, we would just move the money. Are, are you right. saying, Mr. Matt, that that should stay the same? In no, no, no. no. I'm just wondering, are we going to incorporate it in the budget, or are we going to have an article to fund it with free cash? The, we can do that either way. But this is, well, this is the re Usually we leave it up to the treasurer collector and the town clerk if she wants to, he or she wants to include it in the budget, or we'll do an article um, for the purposes of tonight. It appeared in her budget. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think, Mr. Chair, right, historically, I asked Lori and Rich when he comes up, you, you guys generally put your own request. Usually it's an out. article in October. Yeah. 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 And then we just... I think right. That, right. For the supplemental, I believe we did it. Yeah, because it eliminated a couple right. articles. We were just... Yeah. Just right. Mr. Chair. Lori, I have a question. Sure. On the uh, bylaw codification. Yes. I believe you said it was 3500 for estimated supplemental. Three thousand five. Three thousand five dollars. Okay. I might have said the wrong figure, but it's three thousand five dollars. All right, that yep. was my question. Okay. And that was only an estimate. It depends on how many articles we put at the town meetings that we have to put in the supplement. Um, it is on hold from last fall because I'm waiting for one. I wanted to do it all at once. There were three articles, so two of them are ready. I'm just waiting <laughs> on the state for the third. For the okay. 
Anything else? Anybody else? Anything? Thank you, Laurie. Anything else? Okay, anyone, thank you. Sorry. Oh, anyone else have anything? No? Okay. Thank you. Next we have Treasurer Collector. Good evening. I'll pick up where the town clerk had left off under the salary. We have the increase in for this year. Um, if it's decided that it would be better done as a separate article at the annual or a uh, separate article in the fall, we certainly can have that discussion. Uh, the next three items are level funded from the previous year, the increase to the part-time clerk is in this budget. Be happy to discuss that now or later. Um, your data processing and your postage treasurer are holdovers. Fingers crossed we're realizing enough of a discount with a vendor who does the mailing and can take advantage of that bulk indicia that goes across there where we would pay less than what you would for a forever stamp. Next item down, longevity collector, treasurer, that would be very similar. That's to the certification. Again, it's something sort of spelled out for, uh, for my position. The software upgrade is an exact number. We have a bill that comes from VADAR. It's apportioned out, and for argument's sake, the only thing that's netted out would be the water and sewer portion. And again, there's, there's the tax module, um, the accounting module, the utility module, and then there is a count by users. Uh, for what it's worth, there has been an increase in the amount of users for logins. Uh, tax title, 15000 We'd like to do our best. Um, can't imagine any attorney's fees are decreasing over time. Uh, but with property values on the rise, everything has a value, and we really don't do. need to chase people to that nth degree. Anecdotally, we had something at land court where we paid three, we received $3,000 worth of fees back. So the majority of this money is paid to enter something into land court to do a title search, so on and so forth, with the majority of it being recoverable when that issue is settled. The expenses do see an increase. I went through and I annualized as of the end of the year what the actual expenses were, and they have increased as far as what we need to pay um, going forward. The Unemployment Self-Insurance Trust, and if you went down to the OPEB Trust, these are the dollars that we put into a trust today to earn some interest going forward. Town Administrator had made mention of the expectation that someone will be retiring. What we should be doing is putting money aside every year in anticipation of all of those people who have that promise of health insurance at retirement. Um, county retirement, speaking of, I have a placeholder there. I have preliminary information from the retirement board. I don't have the breakouts between general fund, water, sewer, and water sewer because we get the actuary to go through and, and carve out specifically the enterprise funds from us. Again, there's going to be that discount if we, instead of paying two equal halves six months apart, we'd get the discount rate for the second half for that six month. We plan on paying that. Group insurance, the Hampshire Council of Governments Insurance Trust 
as of last Wednesday, voted an 8% increase. Before we go too far, there's approximately $9 million worth of trust funds that have been cannibalized over the last two years. So what that means to the town of Dudley is the town of Dudley bought something with three-year-old prices. They cannibalized that much of the of the trust principle. They had gone through and made the statement that they were only going to keep a three-month run out as far as capitalization goes instead of building up a giant reserve. Also, as much as we've got a good number as far as what your rates are going to be, the board this evening hired someone. So I would imagine in the next 15 to 30 days, we'd have everybody onboarded knowing who will take the insurance, who will not take the insurance, and what will the difference will be for the people who were replaced. The Medicare tax is a placeholder number. Everybody is 1.45%. Uh, That's everyone. If you do the division, it doesn't even come up to the, the $4 million that we're going to have in payroll. Insurance general, 265000 Two months ago, we signed something with Maya, who is our provider, for a zero increase. Now, they reserve the right to go through and modify it for a few items. We had two workers' comp audits where we had to pay additional money for a previous year's insurance. I would expect at one point that number is going to come back. Also, every time you get rid of an older vehicle and replace it with a newer vehicle, there is going to be an upcharge. I expect things to remain similar, but I don't have a finite number until that's been put into place. Again, we submitted this prior to at the annual MMA meeting. They had their Maya program there. I would expect a, a solid number to be coming in and to be about even. Your maturing debt and your maturing debt interest has changed. From last year, we had this building come off, which was not quite 400000 We had some other items come on. We have public safety vehicles. We're going to be paying for, fingers crossed, we get the fire engine that comes in. We're going to have the water filtration, um, the order from the DEP, so on and so forth. We were hoping that the Fed, well, they, they did not not do it yet, but it, the anticipation was rates would decrease coming in and it would be more advantageous to borrow later in the year. It seems that's going to be a moot point. We still have two borrowings to go through and do, um, so we might have a moving target on some of them, but they should be very similar to the estimate. The Webster Dudley Intermunicipal uh, Principal and Interest, this is the 17% of the capital from Webster's sewer plant that did, gets debt excluded. <laughs> so as much as that's a similar number, that, that money goes on to the tax rate. Same thing with the dispatch assessment. That would be another pass through. We would want to go through and update that when the, uh, when the firm number comes through. And then back to the OPEB trust of 10,000. I have a question, Mr. Chairman, for the Treasurer Collector. Thank you. Is it is an account number and a title of Hopper's Cloud payroll yep. and no amounts. Why? It looks like it was inserted. It wasn't part of my original submission. Oh, someone else put that in there? Yes, they did. Okay. So, if, thank you. A few years ago, the plan was to go through minimize paper and have an employee forward, um, an employee live login where you'd be able to go through and much like a time card, instead of it being 
the old time card. It would be a digital time card. We needed to get a few things into place for that. It's my thought that that's going to be sort of the placeholder for it. Maintaining that database is expected to not be a savings. You've eliminated paper, but now you're supporting a digital platform. The whole idea was it was a better way to do things. The additional cost savings maybe would come with Every other week payroll, maybe limiting uh, direct deposits to a single. Don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse, but the, th the thought was let's go through and do something uh, progressive. Mr. Johnson, question. Through the chair. Similar to uh, so automatic calculations instead of manual labor, it turns into uh, cloud based uh, calculations. Or ADP or UKG, just take care of your payroll and not have to have labor. It's more just checks and balances as opposed to running a calculator. Yes. Well, someday we got to get there, right? Chairman, it's been about 14 months. We should get there soon. Never. Right. Well, one more question, Mr. Chairman, for the Treasurer Collector. <coughs> On the group insurance, in your narrative, you put there's going to be a 10% increase. In the budget, it looks like there's approximately a 17% increase. Why? So the 10% was the placeholder, like for same. If we went through the insurance cost for, for argument's sake, my position would increase by that 10%. What we've done is gone through in anticipation of a month ago, the board would not have known who their police candidate was going to be. They expected to hire somebody, and the outgoing person, it wasn't publicized that this person took all the insurance, none of the insurance, or somewhere in the middle. So the placeholder for it is all of the insurance. Part of the narrative, and my apologies if you missed it, was to go through, and while everybody has been onboarded, to go through, there was an email chain saying, these are the positions that we're looking to, to replace. Yes, will they or won't they take the insurance? We plan for it. When the person is hired, we'd have the determination. At one point in the next two weeks, you would have someone onboarded and we'd have that determination and the number would stay the same or go down. So it could go up to the 17%. That's my outer bounds. The odds of all of the positions in the email, the planning email that was circulated, for every one of them to take every insurance that the town pays the 70% for are likely at minimum. So sort of my outer bounds, we're going to go through, happy to reply, uh, supply the report that says we expected to argue, hire, for argument's sake, five people, of which three took the insurance. Please reduce by this dollar amount. Okay. Well, because when I was looking at the narrative, it was a little deceiving seeing yep. the 10% and then coming here, yep. seeing that it's up to 17, and I know you said it's a placeholder, right. but in other areas you actually marked down placeholder. This one you didn't, so it was very deceiving. My apologies, I should have put that there. One other item that's going to factor in there, we are going to have one person retire, if not two. If somebody retires, they're going to go through and they're going to take the health insurance presumably with them into retirement, the person replacing them is likely going to take the insurance. Again, these are an unknown. Thank you. At, at one point in the budget review process, that email will, that email chain will continue. It'll be the confirmation that 
for argument's sake, the library has more than one open position. Oh, excellent, we're going to fill it. Who takes the position? Hopefully it's the best candidate and you know, that's the deciding criteria. That's it. That's it. Mr. Chair. Mr. Sullivan. That's not in the <clears throat> software upgrade. And it's not in a large amount, obviously, but it's a higher amount. And it was some discussion at the last meeting. I would certainly defer to Mr. Landry because I'm not as in tune with the VEDA as he is. Are we, are we getting our bang for the buck? I, and again, I'm probably going to say the wrong term, so. I know Mr. Landry talked about cash books and Rich had, had concerns or reasons why we weren't using it. Are we, are we getting, I guess the bottom line is we're paying a little bit more. I know it's only 2000 but on a 12-2 to 14-3, the percent would, would obviously throw it out of whack. Are we getting a bang for the buck with VEDA? Are we utilizing everything that we were, we voted on about two years ago to go to VEDA? At least. So. I just want to make sure we getting what we getting what we were paying for. I guess the bottom line. So the only difference between twenty four and twenty five is the increase in the users. It says upgrade. I want to say that's the 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 title of the of the account. Originally, Point Software was approximately. Oh goodness! If we had to add in everybody, uh, fourteen thousand. So it was it was a trade-off. The idea that Point Software provided collector software and a basic tax title module. The water and sewer had their own module as well, and no no other departments had anything with it. So for a similar price, we have. I don't want to say the suite, but all of the departments have have something for it. I don't think there is an additional add-on, for lack of a there, there there wasn't a you know the the 2.0 version of it. This, this is I want to say this was the third year of the contract, so, or, oh goodness. Are we in a three-year contract with VEDA? Is that <coughs> Was that, we got it forever now? Because if we're not utilizing everything that VEDA offers, no, we paid all the money. why are we staying with it? I guess is my question. If it's a three-year contract, I'm certainly not trying to turn the accounting system upside down again because it's been brought up that it's been a mesh of two systems for a while now, but I, I guess if, again, if we're not getting our bang for the buck, we're not utilizing, well, we're not getting what we paid for, are we going to renew that contract? Is it a three-year contract? Yeah. Or we got it forever? I'm not saying go back to point, for example, but I'm just, am I making sense? Like, I don't, like, like I said, I don't know all the technical terms of VEDA. I don't know the ins and outs. It's not my ballywick, but it's been brought up more than once that is things are not being used as part of VEDA for whatever reason. <coughs> so <clears throat> I don't I don't know the answer to the question if it's a three year contract or where we stand with the contract. It was a change in, in accounting software Correct. going from BMSI, which was outdated and didn't wasn't really supported supported and functional with what we had to VEDA. Um, but I can find that out. Well, the, it, I mean, we, we bought the software. Correct. So I think you have to pay for the support on top of that. Correct. But I and guess in the baseline of it, if we're not utilizing everything VEDA has to offer, and whatever, I'm not, I'm not saying there's a reason why we're not, but if we're not for whatever reason, I know the Treasurer had talked something at the last meeting about, I don't want to paraphrase for Rich, but Rich taught me something about the accounts going to different banks made something, I don't know what the cash book app you were talking about, making it more difficult or more, and that didn't make sense to me because if we have 400 employees with direct deposit, we can route their pay to, to 400 individual banks if we want. So why can't we route payments 
to different banks or receivables. And again, if I'm using the wrong terminology, and if when if that's that cash books thing that you guys were discussing last meeting, I just I guess if we're not, I, I'm trying to bring it to the base. If we're not utilizing everything we pay for, is it time to go somewhere else or utilize everything we're paying for? If that makes any sense. If it don't, I defer to people. Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a little comment on that. I believe there was a significant cost to get that. Correct, but if we're not about a hundred thousand dollars, I believe, right? Richard, how much was it to the initial? Maybe may have last year's. I only have the. I only have the look back for last year's bill and the breakout for this year's bill showing, showing the difference of the increase of four users, which is what but it yeah, is. I know there's an ongoing fee, but I know there was initial cost to get the system in. It was within the $100,000 range. Which I agree, but at the last meeting it was brought up that we're not utilizing everything right. that's within that software. And my question, I guess, is it is it... It doesn't fit what we need, which would be right. amazing because we put it in on recommendation. We purchased it. But my question is, if we're not using it, why, for starters? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't support our needs, I'm not saying go throw it, <laughs> the baby out with the bathwater, but there's right. got to be a reason we're not utilizing. If there's 10 things in VEDA, we're using six. And that's just a, a number, making that up. Why we're not using four? Right. That's, my, that's my question, and that's what came up, I think, last time. Mm -hmm. I understand. <clears throat> so I don't know the answer. Yeah, so the things on my part that were brought up were the, the, the cash books, the auto reconciliation, and the scanning of either the two types of codes on the bills. And I believe it was the scanning part um, that was mentioned, connecting them with uh, the different banks for the <coughs> different accounts was somewhat or could be problematic and, and again that seems to me like I use a direct deposit as an example and if I'm oversimplifying it or if there's a reason it doesn't make sense if everybody has a different bank every, every town employee we can, we can route their money to a bank why can't we route a payment check to a, to a, a specific bank or a, more than one I don't know the answer to that well, I don't, I'm just asking Rich, and I, I've just I tied it into the software upgrade, so that's the wrong place to bring it up, I guess. But yeah. Well, we're talking about money. We're talking about spending money, and I, I, I'm going to paraphrase what you said. If we're spending money for something, we should use it. And if we, we're spending money for something that we're not using, we shouldn't be spending the money. Is that accurate? Yeah. More or less. Right. By the common base denominator, yeah, that's what I hear. But, Rich was starting the answer, so I apologize. Yes, apologize. Go ahead. I believe we have the appropriate software. <clears throat> I think your next competitor is probably three times the price, if not more. Remember, in the bidding process, we had invited two other people who hadn't offered a bid. Um, so for a similar price of software that maybe had 20% functionality, this gives functionality to all of the departments. I'll go through what I believe might be misrepresented. The treasurer receipts coming over and the effectuation of the cash book needs to be deliberate. At the end of the day, it has everything to do with the organization of what's being brought in as a receipt. If you have a $5 bill, you have a $5 check, and you have a $5 credit card payment, they don't end up at the same bank. Might be at the same financial institution, but not at the same bank. So for the in 
the first round, five weeks, six weeks, of the treasurer's deposits, we had everything funnel through a single turnover, and we're kind of getting off topic here. What got rectified in November was <clears throat> when the cash and the checks come through and they make their way getting scanned, the cash goes in the bank bag, goes in the night deposit. Those went in one direction. Credit cards from the Unipay went on the other one. Remember, your town clerk has a Unipay. We also have the Square account that's down at the recycling center. We have OpenGov. We, we have multiple departments going into an OpenGov. So it's been a matter of reorganizing how the flow of things are taken in and how they're reported. So for December, we should have these things very well laid out. As far as upgrades go, I spent an hour and a half last Wednesday speaking with two representatives and with someone at my office. We started foundationally. We started the first day we did things and we moved up until what we did last week. There was the discussion of the cash book. There was the discussion of the scanning of the bills. Some open and frank discussion as to what you hope to achieve and what realistically would be there. Uh, what upgrades would be necessary? Not necessarily software-wise, meaning we're not going to be changing VADAR, might have to add in a scanner, might have to add in something else, um, a port so that you could have a computer at the... I, Accessories, absolutely. I think the real efficiency when it comes to scanning is when you have a lockbox. So when a third party goes through and processes bills, there is some person who has the Dickensian task of sitting in front of bins of receipts and it gets sorted out by, by, uh, by town. And literally it's you know, when you're, when you're shaving half a second by entry, you know, and you're putting in however many entries, then it's a, an efficiency on a non-crunch moment, probably can key in at a competitive rate. Um, but it's something we're gonna try. We, you know, the, the day following the, the discussion, I, I spoke to the representative, I spoke to another representative from VADAR, saying, you know what, there was a question. You help me find an answer. And we had our discussion. There's gonna be some follow-up. Does, I wanna know how, the, the, the main question is, um, $14,000, uh, is that a reasonable price to pay for the, the software that's being used? I believe it is. Um, I, guess I'm, I guess my question was just kind of following up where our discussion had started at the last meeting. You know, Mark knows a lot more about it than I, and I don't want to speak for him, but by not utilizing cash books or scanning, is that inefficiencies in the use of software on our behalf or is it not apropos use of their software for what the town of Dudley needs? That, I guess that, that was my point. And as I said at the last meeting, I never heard of this cash books. I'm not versed on VEDA. I, I, I couldn't even tell you what VEDA stands for anymore. I remember we voted three years ago. I know it's an acronym. But I, if, if we're, again, if we're, not, if we're not utilizing it, we being the town, that falls on us. If it's something that's not what the town needs, and as you said better than me, Mr. Chair, we're paying for something that we don't need and or do not use. I guess that's the crux of the, my thought processes. Um, 
I guess the only the only thing I can add to this was when when this VADOC system came up in front of Capital Improvement Committee, um, a lot of a few of us on the board did some research into this uh, system, and it um, it's being used and utilized by municipalities much larger and much more complex than Dudley, <coughs> and there's not a lot of limitations that you know, and I'm not a, a software expert or anything like that. It didn't seem like there was any limitations it would have. Are they using cash books? Are they using scanning? The, and that stuff that Mark had brought up. But again, they defer to Mark. So I don't, I don't know if it's utilization right, on our point. end or training or that. But didn't when we when we approved it um, and looked into that software, it seemed like it could handle just about everything a municipality can put into it. So I agree. <laughs> and, but if we're not using it, it's a question. Well, Us versus Remain to what we need. Right. Okay. You you did some research onto this, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it's used right. by many I, municipalities all over the country. It's a I, I just remember your research into the solar panel. That's about forty-two editions of War and Peace. So right. If uh, I didn't do that much research into the VADA system, but I did look into it. I recall voting. I remember you bringing your recommendation mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. I absolutely remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Anything else on this? Any, anything from anyone? Are we no, off the VADA subject, or I think we are. Okay. Um, Rich, can we might no, no, go um, right ahead. Um, I was wondering if you can kind of elaborate a little bit more on the maturing debt. Um, I know we pulled off the payment on the on the municipal center. Um, is that amount include the fire truck? Is that would so fire truck brine machine is in there. Just for general fund debt, yes, we're going to have the fire truck. We're going to have three public safety vehicles, the brine machine, fire station, our water filtration. How much is the? How much is that, Rich? The, the authorization is for three hundred thousand. It's expected to be a five-year pay down. That's gonna, but that's gonna be reflected in your revenue numbers. That's coming out of the water and sewer, right? Oh, that, Mr. Mayor, that's for the Eagle Drive project with all the mitigation and stuff that we've had to do around the cap landfill. That was that article last year. Uh, there's nothing excellent. there's been no water line installed yet so there's no rate payers to pay the, pay the bond off so that's coming straight out of the budget okay is that, that that's all that's in there right making the last payment on the highway street sweeper as well okay. uh, nothing is on the radar new to be mm -hmm. borrowed Um, I guess one more question. Can you elaborate a little bit more? You get you're adding a position, Rich. It hasn't been decided yet. You get it in your budget. I was wondering if you can elaborate. Is so, it part time for sixty five hundred? What what? How are you going to break that down? What is that? How many hours? What? That's going to be the, the part time person that yeah. I plan to add to the. Yeah. It would it would be the it would be four to twelve hours depending um, like the town clerk's office it is busy now likely in the middle of July it's not going to be busy so sort of a prudent use of someone to go through to answer the phones to have someone at the counter so that 
you can you can get some training done, uh, take care of other things rather than staying uh, staying late and doing it all myself. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Yeah. Sullivan? Mike, just to elaborate on that, we had a discussion at our last meeting, and I had brought up that a town accountant is kind of on an island all by herself. There was some discussion. We haven't had a chance to go much further. That if if there's need in other offices, like the accountant, for example, I would I personally would be more amenable to a part timer who can help on the third and the second floor. Mm -hmm. as opposed to one spot and I did reach out to Deb and I didn't get a she was out sick I believe so I didn't have a chance to talk to her but I'm speaking for myself yeah. but the board kind of tabled it to get more information if we're going to bring somebody on I think it makes more sense to go back to that floater position we had years ago where somebody can help upstairs help downstairs have a little bit of knowledge and do, do the job a little more effectively I mean Rich said four to eight. Originally it was eight to twelve. You know, the town clerk's person is nineteen as needed. We certainly don't want to create a full time position, but if we're going to do something on the financial side, it was kind of let's examine the whole picture. And if accountant needs a few hours a day or a week, right? That, so that was when I kind of jumped the gun and said we haven't voted on it yet. I, we want to, I do anyway, and I think the board was semi in agreement. We want to see if there's need more need than just one focus in on right. second floor if third floor needs some help and the person right. would be trained and versed a little bit with both ends even if it's a simple clerical work mr sullivan i believe that floater position you speak of was just filled and that person is currently helping in the town clerk's office yeah, that we was could separate. certainly we could certainly move them right that was separate mm -hmm. though they're yeah. a floater so they can float mm -hmm. so anyway there is a discussion. Right. Anything else? Nope. Anything? Your board, Mr. Mayor? Anyone? Yeah. Anyone in the? Anyone here? Anyone? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Oh, yes. Oh, well, we do have a hand up. I apologize. I didn't see you. You. Your your top blended in with the wall. I didn't see you. I apologize. It's okay. I didn't know if the public could speak. Um, Robin Watson, Dresser Hill Road. Just have a few questions. Um, county retirement. Did you mention, Rich, that health insurance can be taken into retirement? Is that COBRA or is that like forever? Excellent question. So at one point, someone from the town of Dudley will retire. 32B provides that the town of Dudley specifically in Dudley's case, will continue the benefit they hold into retirement, which includes a surviving spouse in the, the case of a widow or a widower. It is at the same 3070. So for argument's sake, I ride off into the, the sunset. I continue my health insurance from the town. The person who replaces me would be offered health insurance again at the 3070 split. Mm -hmm. So when someone retires, the overall cost for health insurance in that line item is expected to increase. You have a person leaving, benefit being maintained, you have a person coming in, ceteris paribus, all things being equal, they're likely to take similar coverage. I understand you would be adding someone new. I just didn't know if a retiree could keep the same health insurance, you know, in perpetuity, uh, <laughs> as opposed to going on Medicare and having to do the whole. And that's, Mr. Chairman, may I? And and for clarification, there's a Mass General Law and <clears throat> Section 19 under 32B. When you retire and you are Medicare eligible, meaning you've been in the private sector or been hired after March of 86, the town takes Medicare from that employee and you become Medicare eligible. Upon retirement, you need to enroll in Medicare. 
If you are actively working for the town of Dudley, you or a spouse turn 65, you need to immediately roll in, enroll in A, <coughs> and then upon retirement, B. If you really want to go down the rabbit hole, the Hampshire Council of Governments Insurance Trust goes through and collects the D subsidy on their own to keep the cost down. And my other question was, um, I noticed the Dudley Middle School roof is not on this budget. Will we see that with the school budget next uh, February 14? Right. So, Mr. Chairman, so the town of Dudley issues its own debt. There is going to be some crossover in that both member towns approve the borrowing for the repair. <clears throat> Based on the apportionment, Dudley is going to be charged one amount with the remainder going to Charlton based on the enrollments. Also, there's the split in that there is a Charlton only com um, portion, so they're repairing a Charlton school, but for argument's sake, that's part of the capital that goes into the assessment. As of today, it's going to be paid straight out of the budget as part of the assessment. The town has the ability to go through, identify what the, um, the roof costs are going to be as far as what it's going to be, uh, the borrowing amount, and we may debt exclude that, which would appear on the recap when the assessor goes through and sets the tax rate, but wouldn't necessarily appear in the treasurer collector's budget, it would be part of the, the school line item, but one portion of that would be raised as part of the tax rate. Okay. Thank you. If it passes. If it passes, thank you. So, so, so that I think that's the 800 pound gorilla, Mr. Chairman, is are we paying for it by raising our taxes or are we taking it from the general fund that's probably the question that was being asked mm -hmm. and then the answer is it's up to the voters mm -hmm. it is the same voters who voted to replace the roof mm -hmm. it wasn't us it wasn't rich it wasn't FAA it was the votes. town meeting no it was ballot. oh no ballot ballot, ballot. Oh. that's right ballot. so it's gonna be a, at some point it was a voted ballot. a town meeting though. put it on the ballot that's what I <clears throat> yeah it's gonna be the same Eight hundred pound gorilla. Anything else? Anyone else? Anything? Thank you. Mr. Thank you for the time. Thank I you. expect an update or two as a solid number comes in. Of course, it goes to the town administrator, town accountant, and uh, you have Olivia in part of this group, correct? Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Next. Uh, what? Are we, are we done with the department? Counseling. Oh, department heads. Well, yeah, we have to go through. We're still here. Okay. Next is Council on Aging. Oh. It's Council on Aging and then Planning. Uh, no, no one's here from Council I'm on Aging? I'm happy to represent Council on Aging with this budget. <laughs> it's entirely okay. grant funded, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Zero percent increase. Zero percent increase. Okay. Mr. There was a lot of consternation last year with the discussion about the zero funding. So it's not z that it's zero funded. It's grant funded. Outside we of the just, tax base. Outside of our tax base. We zero. had we had a few years ago we had a ten thousand dollar additional amount in that budget <coughs> in order to increase the salary for the council on aging director so we could replace the outgoing one. That's now figured into the actual grant application and it's budgeted through a grant in its entirety right right uh next you off any com uh, comments. thank you appreciate it planning. next and last is the planning board yes well good evening So uh, the planning board is a 
uh, planning uh, board is a rather simple budget. There are five line items. Uh, the planner's salary is, as you know, I'm a uh, contractual consultant, so the term salary is a bit of a misnomer, but it's probably good enough to use. Uh, I work um, uh, 15 hours a week, uh, and that's $46,200 uh, covers that amount of effort. Uh, the expense uh, item is $600. It used to be around $1,200, but I think it was cut back uh, as a cost-saving measure a year or two ago. Um, these tend to be things like uh, public hearing notices for zoning bylaw amendments. They come out of the, uh, the planning board budget. Uh, legal and engineering, you know, all the legal expenses come out of the town council budget, and all our engineering costs are uh, paid for by applicants, so there's no town expenses uh, for engineering. Uh, seminars, I do encourage uh, planning board members to attend citizens planner training collaborative workshops, which are now mostly remote and are fairly inexpensive. Uh, and then there's an annual workshop at Holy Cross for planning board people that I also encourage board members to go to. These are very valuable uh, for these members to attend. They get to, you know, collaborate with their peers and learn uh, from experts, proper procedures for uh, dealing with various matters that come before the board. Uh, so these, uh, and I've always uh, told the members that we'd cover those costs if they wanted to attend a workshop. Uh, that typically comes out of expenses. Um, I don't know whether it's possible to add some money into the seminar line item here that would be more appropriate uh, place to um, to charge these kinds of, ex of expenses, but it would only be a couple hundred dollars in any case. And the last item is for the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission dues. Every year, these go up two and a half percent. I haven't gotten the, uh, the notice this year as to what that will be. I will pass that along to the administrator uh, when I get the invoice. So that might go up a little bit, but, but not much. Uh, it really depends on uh, with the commission uh, votes to assess its member communities. Anything from anyone? Anything? Mr. Chair, I just want to state too publicly, we know it, they know it. Bill's here a lot more than 15 hours a week. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Mr. You know, Chair. Mr. Meeting, he's, he's involved with a lot of things. He's a great asset for the town. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, do you report everything? No, that's fine. Okay. Anyone here? Thank you. No? No, nothing. Good. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Thank you. All right, next up we have the FAA chair concludes business, adjourns meeting of the FAA, and then we're going to have a brief recess to allow you to leave. Yes. Can I ask a, a question um, of the FAA before you, they adjourn? I'm just trying to get a rough idea for budget planning because I have the FAA for the one line item for the reserve fund, reserved amount you were thinking, or you want to see how everything looks at the end. I think we did 20 last year. Well, yeah, Between 15 would be the lowest, I would say. So. Leave it at 20? I would leave it at 20, right? yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to make sure. Any, any comments on that? Or? No, that's fine. I mean, we've used it. We've used it. God, so. We've had it in the past a few times. So. Right. Okay. I'll just put 20 for now. For now, and then we'll see where the budget okay. goes from there. <clears throat> Great. All right. Um, does anybody have any other questions? I don't know. Does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn the FAA meeting? Make a motion to adjourn the FAA meeting. Second. Okay. Any discussion before we adjourn? All right. All in favor, say aye. Yep. aye. All right. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. A brief recess. Uh, well, you folks get five minutes.
Uh, looks like all we have is the police chief. Do you have anything in addition? Uh, just, just real quick, uh, last week, like I mentioned during the uh, budget, um, we did have a missing juvenile. Uh, we worked with local, state, federal agencies, uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was a lot of work. We had uh, four or five officers pretty much dedicating the whole shift to, uh, to, to doing that. Also, we, uh, we had a, executed a search warrant at Oxford Ave. Uh, we got seven grams of fentanyl, one gram of crack cocaine. Um, that's the second time we've had that house in the last uh, two and a half months, so hopefully that puts an end to that. And I just found out uh, today that uh, we, uh, we submitted paperwork for an arrest warrant for the uh, suspect for the uh, Dollar General. Uh, he's held in custody for other robberies right now, and uh, he's also uh, he, he's in custody because of Connecticut. He uh, pulled a gun on the trooper, but um, I expect that to uh, to disclose that name tomorrow. So with that, again, we're doing a lot of work with what we have, but a detective position would really help us out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Quick question for the chief, Mr. Sullivan. Chief, a couple months ago, you gave us a preliminary report on an incident in Nichols. Do we have any update on that? Uh, it's still pending in court. Uh, I believe everybody got arraigned. Uh, it's just in the hands of the DA's office right now. So everything's pending. Charges were filed. Yes, there were 10 individuals that were charged. All right, thank you. 10 individuals yes. charged. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Fire Chief, do you have anything? I don't have anything. You don't have anything. Thanks, Chief. And we've got no one else, so uh, we've got... We got Rich. We've got... Would you like to come up, Rich? Do you have anything before we start the uh, next piece? The next piece, absolutely. Yeah, I just figured you'd. I just figured you'd loop it all in. So, tabled from 122, we have a request from the treasurer collect to hire additional staff and direction the TA to provide a motion for board of selectmen to vote to engage in a review of financial management and processes. So we left off hiring additional staff. Hmm. I just want to get it out there. All right. Um, yeah. Originally, this was a request made to your assistant town administrator and then to the town administrator okay. following meeting or previous meeting. It shows up as a an item. Uh, understand that the board appreciates that money does not grow in trees specifically in Dudley and wanted some input appreciate that um, let me continue where I had been previously we had someone leave in April so we had two people in the office until the middle of November we had some part-time coverage to go through and help get some of those things done what I'm looking for, I'm asking for, for the board is a person to take care of some of the day-to-day -day tasks so that we can catch up on what needs to get done. That includes training. There's two people in the office, kind of tough to stop what, what's going on and to continue along in training. So it's not fair for the person we've just hired who very shortly we'll be getting a three-month review. Again, thank you. Excellent candidate. Glad there was positive response from the board. But it's also not fair to the other employee in that office who needs to do some training. <coughs> so the idea is we'd be able to get some breathing room and be catch up for the eight months or so where there was not three people in the office. I mean, I have my, my figures how many days one person was in the office. Uh, I smile and say, I think the office had been closed only two times in that eight months. Um, I think that, that, that demonstrates some commitment. We're looking to go through and to get that person in there. Um, tomorrow's gonna be a busy day. As far as higher level things, 
going to be at a loss. There's going to be that much foot traffic. Uh, we're coming into the busiest period. This is where I think the few hours will help the most. There will be lines, just that many people will be there. Um, I don't know how, how deep we want to get into it. I appreciate that there was some relief during the course of the summer. Um, I'm asking for some additional, and it is to get where we should have been. Um, there, there's, there's countless tasks that need to get done, as, as simple as um, I, I took payments today. Not that I'm, it's above me, but at the end of the day, there's a whole bunch of additional things. I will leave this meeting tonight, and I will sit at my desk for an additional hour to get more work done. I was here last weekend. I was sick the weekend before, but the weekend prior to that. I, I, I stay late. I have the ability to perform some work from home um, to make up eight months of not having a full-time person sitting in the office is a, a Sisyphean task, very difficult to, to achieve. And I, I am asking to appreciate that money is tight. Uh, the, in my thinking, what would be used would be the salary in the assistant treasurer's account who did not start until April, uh, excuse me, November 13th. That's what I'd like to use for funding. And again, uh, back to the budget review. The plan is to be judicious. Uh, we don't need someone sitting there filing their fingernails or playing on their phone. We're looking for someone to, to be that front face to take care of a lot of the simpler tasks uh, so that other things can get taken care of. Okay. Any questions from the board? Mr. Johnson. Uh, Rich, the, the, I think the motion I made and, and had seconded, I think I said, uh, if I remember it correctly, uh, offer X number of hours till the end of uh, June in order to temporarily assist. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, based on the discussions you had today and uh, the questions we had from last week, my what I'm wondering is, do you think that the motion I made for, I think it's roughly about the number of hours you were talking about, would that help not only to do some of the that work that you were talking about in your office, but would it also possibly uh, be a help to, to you and the town accountant to do some of the work necessary to get VADAR uh, populate a little bit more to help you get some of the efficiencies <coughs> that the software might generate in terms of labor in the office? I hadn't thought of it that way. Um, I would have likely gone a different direction and looked for 16 hours where you could plan on two days where that shade was down, there was an additional person to take care of what they could have, and not just the morning. That's where the, the 4, 8, 12 had come from. The idea was 8 to 12 um, to, to take care of, to, to sort of build that buffer in. Um, if there is a slightly different plan where there is a different sort of outcome, I, I wouldn't speak to what the other department, you know, may or may not need, but certainly wouldn't be in a long-term thing. Um, when you don't get interrupted with telephone calls or what have you, uh, a four-hour block of time is pretty good. I'm sure eight is really good. Um, in addition to everything that I've done, your <coughs> assistant treasurer has stayed half an hour, 45 minutes, up to an hour late because he saw the opportunity of me closing out a month. Um, 
Right now the veterans agent has some months to close out. I could have posted on the desk that says, whatever we're gonna do tomorrow, let's make sure that we hold hands to do it. So it's not a matter of me locking myself in to get it done. It's a matter of some engagement so that I'm not the only person that knows how to do this. Um, if you were to amend your motion to look for a little different scope with, with some additional hours, absolutely, even if it's for a shorter period of time. Did that answer your question, Mr. Johnson? Yes, I think so. Okay. Uh, follow up. Uh, is it possible to rescind my motion? Because I don't, you know, based on what Rich and I are spitballing here, I don't think it's adequate to for the the question that was at hand. So. The thing is, I seconded it. Yeah. Yeah. So he withdrew it. So he needs to. He withdrew it. It's last meeting, so it's off the table. Anyway. Yeah. He withdrew it. <coughs> So no, I tried to withdraw, and you, you, you had me bring it to this. We tabled. We tabled it. Oh. Mr. Chairman, I believe if you, I don't think you could go into a recess with a motion. Wouldn't, wasn't the motion rescinded? I believe it and was. The, and and the, the agenda item tabled to appear on the next yeah, we'll start agenda. <clears throat> I believe that's what happened. I'm just going to consult the minutes. I believe that's what happened. So. Yeah, Michelle's got it right in front of her. She can read it to you if you want. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Was was the motion rescinded, Michelle? It was it was withdrawn. Okay, withdrawn. Excellent. It was withdrawn. So there is no motion, no. clean slate. No. Yeah, because too much. Uh, there was too much. Mr. Marcy. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So just so everybody is aware, we were talking about a couple weeks ago that Rich has this money within his budget that he needs to like catch up on some work. We talked about you know potentially getting somebody in here. You know, for this the rest of this fiscal year to help him. And I think we were, when I came back from outside for a minute, I, kn I thought we were talking about helping Rich's office plus upstairs if needed, need be, right? And that's where I thought we were going with this. Well, the question was, why would we, if there's a, if, and I'm not saying issue is probably the wrong word, if there's help needed upstairs and help needed downstairs, my point at the time was we should address it all at once. Right. And again, here we go. Rich just said it again, four eight twelve, and then he just said sixteen two weights. We don't even have a, a scope of work yet. And Mr. Johnson's point, a scope of hours. I mean, and Mr. Johnson's point, I think, was take funding this year when the person's position would expire July first, unless the budget brought it forward. But which he did. But. The funds that are left over from the person being out is returned to the general fund. There's no less a missing budget process. We can't carry over excess funds from one line item to the next. And I get it that money's going back. <coughs> Every department that puts money back, for example, they're gone now, but if one of the EMS services has money left over in their line item, but they're not allowed to carry that balance forward. You know what I'm getting at? Just say if it's ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars for supplies and they spend eight, they don't get to bring that two forward next year to get twelve. Or bring that two forward to bounce off to ten request. That spins into free cash. It has to, right? Mm -hmm. Only in this, yeah, I don't want to go down the other hole, but so again, Rich just said it, four eight twelve, and then he just said sixteen. So I'm not even sure what we're looking at for hours. Because if you do sixteen at 6,500, I'm using his request for next year, so obviously it'd be a little less because it's half a year. We don't know the scope of the person, what they're paying, if it's a monetary item. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna vote against I'm gonna vote <coughs> against it, and only because I, if we're gonna do even a small adjustment of a part timer in the big picture, how much does it cost? I get it. If there's other issues that need to be helped, in another department that's closely aligned with Rich. And don't forget, we have one person up there, and she has 
what, four hours a week or whatever? <laughs> What's her, who's her assistant? <laughs> Doesn't somebody help her? No, it's nobody. On right? Wednesday. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think we still have plenty of time. And I get Mr. Johnson's point. If we're going we're gonna to sunset at the end of the fiscal year with existing funds, a little more palatable. But I, I, at a minimum, I want the scope of hours, days. I'm, I mean, I'm not pinning Rich down. If he wants two eight-hour days, that's more than four eight twelve. So I, I just think there's a lot of moving parts. And I'm just not comfortable. Mr. Marson. Uh, just to, to build on that, I mean, one of the things we're going to talk about next is like what, that you guys talked about last time was you know going to DLS to you know did look at a financial management review, which is one thing. But while we're doing that, that's going to tie up like all resources in these offices. So I think it is a good idea that we actually have somebody there to like pick up the slack, you know, within his budget. Again, within his budget. So, um, but. To that point, we always try to fill too ho many holes with with you know what we have. So if there's if there's, if there's a way that you know we can get relief on both areas doing this, that that would be optimal in my book. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody they, those the two departments work closely together. So <coughs> wherever the workload, I mean, I do we do this right? You know, you know, my, in my in my job is I work balance every January I look at my team and I say like okay who's got what and I, I, I shift the work based on the resources I have knowing that I may not be able to get anybody else so it's important that we try to like look at this holistically but we also got an email mr. chair and, and people can look online at what the services are being offered through division of local services in I have the email in front of me. I can look it up my phone. There were <coughs> two people, a couple of days in person. The rest, they would either do their own work or drill down their own documents and come back if they need be. I don't think there's going to be anybody here for hours upon hours disrupting workflow. And again, if you're in a multi-person department and you have to sit down with a, an auditor, for example, you sit down with the auditor and the department doesn't close, correct? And if you had a one-person department, so, I'm um, again. I've already stated. I'm not going to state it six times. Five should be enough. I understand. Anyone? Anything else? Mr. Marcy, Mr. Langer, Mr. Johnson. I, I you know, I, 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 through the chair, I don't, I don't, I don't want to belabor the point, but you know, everyone, you know, plans the labor they need to do. The work in a department, company whatever differently and I think uh, the, the way I'm used to, to doing it is much much different than anything I've seen in, in the town and you know that's not a, the way we do it here is wrong and the way hmm. we do it and it's thriftier here if I can interject that Mr. Johnson I, I don't know I, I don't know if it's thriftier the scale is different mm -hmm. the, the roles are different um, I think uh, you know. Do we, if we want to invent new ways to, or, or <coughs> use different ways to describe the, the the work content required to do a position, either from uh, you know, what I would call top down, which is the work you got done in the hours that you actually spent, and compare it against uh, the, the theoretical. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, line <coughs> items of work that's required to do it, and you calculate it back up and look at the difference. You know, you can do it that way, <coughs> and you know, provide detail required to staff a a department. You know, or you know, it's you know, I don't want to say it's a what what I tend to see in our budgeting process here, either for special occasions or for. Uh, you know, long-term stuff it's more generalization so you know I, I don't know which one's right or wrong I'd be willing to, to take a, a chance at you know a, a short-term bump a small small amount of dollars and you know basically make the same motion I made last time and end it at the uh, the last day of June 
with the with the expectation that these problems are solved in the next budget cycle is uh, well-defined work and well-defined accountability to get that work done and the and the hours that are provided. So I I I've, I have no problem making the same motion and that I made last time and you know put it to a vote and if it fails it fails so when if it succeeds it succeeds. What's the motion, Mr. Johnson? Uh, I believe uh, I made a motion to the uh, yeah. Do you have <laughs> in my exact wording? It's your exact wording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Johnson may interrupt. I apologize. It depends. No. If you're going to say it the sixth time, then you said you're no, 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 no. I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm listening to 4 8 12 16. So, like I said, I'm still confused. But here, here's my offer before you make a motion. And I'm going to take the middle ground and say 12 per week. Would your motion, would you consider your motion? To somehow word it that the person we bring in would be split equally between the accountant and the treasurer with the sunset provision of the end of this fiscal year and that way if if the accountant needs that little extra help she gets a little bit somehow if she doesn't I'm sure she's gonna come back and say I don't need it and then those hours would revert I, I, Yes, Mr. Jones. I have the treasurer collector standing in front of us asking for help as the accountant asked for. I'm going to defer. I can say for a fact, yes, she has. I'm going to defer. Okay. Then, yes, I would willing to make that. How many hours did, was the last motion, Mr. Mm. Chairman? It was I said 10. 12. I or said 12. I just said 12 was a. Like last time he said 10. Round. 40 hours per month or 10 hours per week. Right, that's what I remember. Okay. So if we go to, I, I, again, we six don't have the six. scope of the job and the pay even. So if it's 6,500, we spread it over 10 hours, that's 650. So I would I'd be much more amenable to that, to at least send the message that we, as Mark said, we realize that somebody else could use some help too. Mr. Carmignani, go ahead. Through the chair, Mr. Johnson, thank you for the motion, the original motion for 10. May I add to the conversation that if the accountant wishes a similar mirror position, I'd be happy to advocate for a transfer from that line item so that the accountant can, at her discretion or the board's pleasure, have a similar position, separate. Thank you. So, and this is ending the end of June, sunset provision, correct? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yes. I just want to make sure I understand I, I, I'm just not sure that you can get two people working six hours per week. No. Or, you know, two people, you know, it's, I think it's easier just saying one person split between two if the one one person, but two offices, how many hours a week? I would Total? say now 12, 6 and 6. To end at the end of June. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. can Mr. I add one more thing to that? You're on the right track. The other thing is, and, and allow the, the department heads to work it out as they see fit based on weekly workload. The, the only thing with that is if it's not, hmm? Mr. Chair, the only thing <clears> that is if it's not spelled, one department can say, I need eight. The other one says, well, I need eight this week. All we have is 12. Mr. Root is the tiebreaker. He's here during the day, we're not. Uh, I, I'd word it differently. I would, yeah. Well, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I want right. to hear how the motion's worded first, then, before I. I I'm just it? spitballing here. Yeah, take Imagine. a crack at it. Take a chair, I can't tell you yes or no. Right. It's going to sound very familiar. <laughs> I'd like to motion to request the fund and hire a part time position in both the treasurer collector's office 
and the town accountant's office for a, a period to end at the end of this fiscal year for no more than 12 hours per week split evenly between the treasurer collector's office and the town accountant's office. That's, your, that's it? I think so, because uh, I said split evenly and it's 12 hours per week. A second for discussion. Motion and a second discussion. And before the discussion begins, I'd like to remind everyone we have a floater in the town clerk's office right now. We not necessarily, Mr. Chair. That job was dedicated to her. It wasn't dedicated to float. It was dedicated to the vote. I'd have to look. Was up to 19 hours, and the clerk said, "If I don't need 19, I won't use 19." I don't believe that was voted. Well, I believe it was voted up to 19 hours per week in the clerk's office. I, I was under the assumption that that was a position that was filled that was previously unfilled and the position was floater. Am I incorrect? I don't have the minutes in front of me, but I believe that the vote was up to 19 hours it, as needed, based on her discretion. It through the floater line item. Right, through the floater the line. That, it was the but, line item. That's where we got but it. it wasn't dedicated as a floater like we used to right. have. Mm. So because she had said, if I don't need her, right. need the person. I don't, know if it's a, I don't even know if it's a he or she. I don't know if she we died. voted on that? We she did? said, if I don't need 19, I will not use yeah. 19. <clears throat> For some reason, I've got floating you know, in my mind. I apologize. No, no, no. Motion and a second. You know, Mr. Chair, one more thing of discussion is as we talk about floater, there we go again. If we had a 19 hour, not, not talking about Laurie's position, if we had the floater, we'd be able to float to Rich's office, to the accounting as needed. Cover vacation, cover a sick day, half a sick day. I, I guess then I'd like to rephrase what I said. Mr. Carmignani was quite generous to offer some of that line item for the accountant. I believe he said he would advocate for a mirror position. I don't think he... I thought he did. I thought... No. Nope. Yeah, he thought we she will would find get out it. Very get clearly, it. if the board decided for the 10 hours for the treasurer collector's office, I would be the first at the podium to advocate for a similar position for the town accountant. Previous meetings, town administrator had raised his hand okay. saying, in anticipation of... I'm, I'm okay. just mishearing okay. things today. I apologize. Okay. Never, never an issue. Better information is 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 what we need. Absolutely. Okay. So, I guess I'm just trying to blend everything together and make it work. And I'm just having my own conversation, <coughs> Mr. Johnson. And Mr. Chairman, uh, to further clarify, should it also be said that it would be equally funded between half between the treasurer collector's office and half between the town accountant's office? Or is there no funding available in yeah, the town correct. accountant's the office? Correct. Right. It has to come out of his budget. So far, the only funding available, and again, is that leftover from not filling that okay. position. So I, that wouldn't be possible to say mm -hmm. that. Okay. It would be a simple interdepartmental transfer. Okay. So we have a motion, we have a second. And the motion is just to clarify? Um, Jason Johnson motion to request to fund and hire a part-time position in the town accountant's office as well as the town clerk, town treasurer's office with a period ending this fiscal year for no more than 12 hours per week. Okay. Split evenly. Split evenly. Well, yeah. right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And Mr. Chair, can we make a, a promise or an obligation to revisit the issue before the next budget season is set in stone? If we decide to go forward. Yeah, we have to. It's well, no, it's got a sunset provision. So right, no, but it's, he put it in his budget for, for this. So, so not we, approved yet either. Right, I'm that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we figure out going forward if this works maybe we need slightly more hours we, if we can fund it we figure it out but I just I must make a pledge among ourselves and to rich and Deb's not here that we will revisit it even it means reinstate reinstituting the floater position and they can use right so I like the, the floater position the, there's a lot of, there's a, so we get the vote and that's all it let, counts. yeah let's 
you know, does, we're, we're throwing solutions to a problem we haven't fully defined. And I'm surprised you didn't say that earlier because I was thinking it. <laughs> so it's good we've got a band. <laughs> we kind of we know, know what the yeah. we okay. generally know what it is. Then why we vote on it? We no, we generally right. know the problem. We generally well, know. But, you know, know we're talking about future, you know, future solutions to the the another right. problem. So Excellent. Rich, we just hopefully, on the hopefully we get you part way to what what you're asking for. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Rich. And just and just to put a bow on this, just like I said, department head to department head, you know, Debbie, like you guys work it out. Like it, depending if you need more this week, you guys will work it out. We trust you Blood guys. But even way. You guys can do the right thing. Some week, Blood some week. I know that's the what the motion already, said. Right. You gotta stick to it. Right, but I mean, well, one guy, one reality guy. might bite us, right? So just like no. they can trust, I trust them to work it out if need be. That's what okay. I best point. But thank, thank you, Mr. Lander. Good point. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, what else? We, got? we have a we have a suggested motion here. Oh. Direction to the TA to provide motion for board of selectmen to vote to engage in a review of financial management processes. There's a suggested motion. Mr. Sullivan. Sullivan. Before I make the motion, right. Mr. Chair, we talked about oh, it no. earlier. <laughs> We talked about it earlier. I'll let, I'll let Mr. Manager make the motion when the time comes. For the people out there and the people that are here that are calling for uh, audits and reviews, I, I strongly suggest they go to the, to the website and read the reviews that DOS through DOR did on towns like West Brookfield and a couple others to you can understand the scope of what we're going to vote for tonight. It's a step, I think, in the process of people that think we need an audit um, it's we like the price and but if you go read what these other towns have done I think it's gonna at the end of the end result will hopefully satisfy a lot of chatter discourse and discussion that we've had on it so I'll let mr. set your discretion let mr. Landry because he's the one that did all the research M mr. Me chairman uh, I move to direct the town administrator to notify the Massachusetts Department of Revenue Division of Local yeah. Services of the Board of Selectmen's request to complete a financial management review of the town of Dudley at its earliest convenient and that the review should include but not limited to a, a focus on the town's financial offices any material deficiencies that may exist in those offices and practices procedures and policies that guide municipal decisions Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Next up, we have board member comments. Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, as people probably know, as Laurie Smith in the clerk's office talked, there is an election tomorrow. Uh, it's open to Republican and unenrolled voters, of which Dudley has a majority of unenrolled. So please take advantage of your right to vote. We say it all the time. We'd rather have 500, 5,000 people show up and vote, and we don't agree with the vote, than have 50 show up and complain afterwards. So please exercise your right to vote tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Soul. Mr. Johnson. I have nothing to. You did plenty. Mr. Landry. Nothing to. Mr. Marcy. You know, just to thank you to all the department heads who uh, provided their first pass and, and to the FAA for being here to go through that. I hope everybody realized that you know, we're, we, we want to make sure everybody understands we have everything out there. It's, it's, gonna, it's transparent. Everybody's here to ask any questions. And um, we'll hopefully get through this budget process uh, smoothly. We, but we, we will have some bumps, you know, but which, which we'll work through as they come up. Thank you. Tune in on the 14th. And then on the 14th. And Thursday. Thursday. And Thursday. I know, but you're right. <laughs> thank you. A lot of meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Ruto, what time, what time are the polls open tomorrow? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. Tomorrow, February 6th, uh, we have a special election. Please vote. I'll stop there. Um, and as, as a poll, in reference to the last motion that we voted on, I, I want to 
I want to thank Mr. Landry. He did a lot of research on how we could find some sort of a, an audit or examination of the town's fiscal management structure and practices at, at, a, at a cost that was appetizing. Uh, it'd be pretty easy for us to put a request for a proposal. It could cost six figures, high six figures it could cost. But Mr. Landry found something that was offered by the state that's free. They're going to come here. They're going to look at our financial management structure, how we're doing things, if we're doing anything wrong. They're going to suggest things that, are, that we could change. And as Mr. Sullivan pointed out, there are examples of what they've done in other towns. And I, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. And like was said, the cost is appetizing at free, zero. Mr. Chair, they also talk about other policies and procedures that guide municipal decisions outside of the scope of just finances. Yes, they do. They, there's a, Very thorough. It, it's, it is thorough. Yep. It is thorough. And it, um, the, the key thing is that I take from looking at this is if there's something bigger, they're going to identify it, something that needs more work, whether it's the structure the actual work that's done or if there's an issue they'll they'll give us they'll give us something we can use going forward that's all i've got um next on the agenda adjournment motion okay. to adjourn mr chairman second right, i almost seconded so many all in favor aye good night everybody good night, good night.